Hi everyone, my name is Rebecca, I'm a fish biologist, an ichthyologist and also a PhD student. I specialise and study the evolution of lower card catfishes. And today I'm going to talk about some new inhabitants I got for this tank here. So I'm going to go through the biology, the ecology and the husbandry of Xenomistis nigari or nigri, which is the African knife fish. So these are very similar or morphologically, anatomically very similar to South American gymnotiform knife fishes, but these ones are more closely related to memoids, even though they are still electrosensitive. Not all uh, fishes given the name knife fishes are electrosensitive, and I have a small uh, shoal of them at the moment. So let's get into the so here we have my small group, so it's only three of them and I've had much bigger shoals before and you can see in other videos where I've had I think up to five or more. So this is just the three of them and I don't think they're particularly dimorphic but I believe you can identify females from males. So I have seen some uh, like scientific specimens of them and the largest uh, these, this species will grow to is around 15 to 20 centimetres standard length. Often this is sort of the max size, I guess about that 10 centimetres in captivity maybe larger but not many people keep them so it's very difficult to work out how large they get and the big thing about these guys is that unlike traditional knife fishes unlike gymnotiforms Xenomistus nigari actually feeds on a lot of dry food it'll feed on frozen food it's not fussy at all it doesn't mind about the size of the food particularly obviously it is uh, the mouth is gape limited so it can't actually feed on anything bigger than um, its mouth, but they are carnivores obviously, and they feed using electrosensitivity. So this electrosensitivity is actually quite interesting. So they aren't actually related to the South American gymnotiforms, the true knife fishes, South American knife fishes, but they do have electrosensitivity. And this is because they're most, well, pretty closely related to, as a member of Notopatiridae, pretty closely related to memorids, which is elephant noses, and they are also electrosensitive. Um, they don't have any ability to electrocute you. Uh, obviously, there's uh, Electrophorus, which is a genus of South American knife fishes, and they can, but this group is Asian and African fishes. So, and you can see, like, if you look, they've got a really large eye, and they're... Unlike true knife fishes, they're definitely using visual cues. And if I haven't got a video of it, but if you shine the light into the tank, it does reflect. So they have very good, probable night, uh, night vision. They can somewhat move backwards like the true knife fishes. It's just convergent evolution of morphology. They aren't the same group, and not all of these African knife fishes are electrosensitive. So the other closest relatives would be the Afa and the Clown. The Clown is the one that has no electrical ability at all. But you can see in this morphology, uh, well, sorry, in the behaviour, it's kind of interesting because it makes me think that they are communicating quite highly on electricity because you get this sort of like jumping behaviour with no sort of visual cues to it. And it's very similar to memorids in a way. But there isn't actually that much research on this group we don't really, I don't think we know at all how they reproduce. And I kind of think, I don't know, they could be egg scatters. I don't actually know how memorids reproduce. But compared to a lot of memorids, these are easier to feed. And unlike a lot of knife fishes that people keep, or stereotypes about knife fishes, or gymnotiforms, and also this group, these are insanely social fishes. Uh, quite a few memorials are as well, but these are shoaling fishes, and you'll see recommendations online about keeping them alone. Now, assume it's mostly from assumptions where people have kept them before, but uh, like, or where they just see knife fishes and it's a precaution. But these, you can see, they're not real, there's no real obvious territorial behavior, there's no real aggression, they're not really showing that much dominance. I, there's that sort of popping behaviour, I don't 
really know much about it or have seen any references to it where the individual sort of will do this jumping motion you can see this it's really interesting shared morphology quite similar to some of the ghost and uh, ghost knives but not so glass knives maybe but um uh not the albifons the common black ghost knife fish it's quite similar in a way but they're great species just much more chilled than the most common which is black ghost and the brown ghost um apitono apitonotus or atonotus um albifons and the brown uh knife fish this is the african knife fish or the african brown knife fish not to be confused and you can kind of see a difference in behavior in store they'll be swimming around a little bit more they tend to, I don't find they rest in the same way. They're not, as I've said, they're not closely related, so the morphology uh, behaviour is very different. You can see one of my um, Bunocephalus banjo catfishes there. This tank has the smaller of the Bunocephalus I keep. And you can see they're just moving around. They're actually searching for food because I've put in some dry food. So I just put in Tetra Pro Crisps and some. Um, or was it Gamorous shrimp? Just to see if they come... Well, they were out anyway, but just to see whether they'd feed on it. And they have definitely calmed down since, because this was actually just after adding them. And I'm not entirely sure if this is a stress response, but they are much more confident to come out than other fishes, and definitely other knife fishes. So most true knife fishes wouldn't do this. Um... And here's my eel. This is Neil. He's a Macrogonathus circumcintus. So half banded spine eel, I think. But he's quite aggressive compared to most of them. So I'm not 100%. You can see they're not really showing any obvious predatory behaviour towards the tetra. And I'm not sure it's really known what they these guys eat in the wild. I suspect it's mostly invertebrates that they're... And that's why they're kind of doing this rooting behaviour. And you see them in morids, more than knife fishes, I think, where they're kind of going up to things and doing very close sort of checks. And I've seen it in uh, the uh, Cornish Jack, which is one of the largest memorids in Lake Tanganyika, or the largest memorid. And they're just searching for invertebrates. So it might be quite fun to do little experiments of putting um, food in the sand, see if they can find it, like live food. And it looks like... For some reason, one of the video makes it look like one has an injury on its uh, caudal fin, but doesn't. I don't know. Maybe it's just a slight bit of damage, but you can see they're absolutely fascinating to watch. And they're reasonably confident. But, there, yeah, there isn't much really scientifically known about them and I thought I'd show you a long sort of video just to show their social behaviour, how active they are, how they are as a group on their own they're very shy fishes but if you have a group they're much more confident and I think it's much more appealing for most fish keepers to keep them in this manner and also they make a much better alternative they're not really fussy on ph um or tds or conductivity but we don't really know i guess we can work out their habitat i believe these guys are very widespread well, since they've never been bred in captivity it's difficult to say whether there's any triggers for it it might just mean they need a species only tank um it's impossible to know whether I have both males or females. I don't even know of the previous groups I had. But it's quite interesting to see there is that sociality when hunting. Either they're using each other to find um, the food or they're actually sort of... There's something more social of the hunting narrowing down where there is food, which might be more of a piscivore trait than for invertebrates, but... I'd assume likely with quite a few invertebrates, if there's one, there's more likely more in one space. And you can see them moving around just behind that Monstera. Monstera adesonii. I, not Laniata. Um, uh, that's uh, Monstera. Li I can never remember the actual spelling or pronunciation of it. You can see, it's just much more interesting to watch because I 
find with Tetra and stuff, they don't really do this sort of behaviour, this sort of very unique sort of, not, they're not shoaling particularly closely. They're showing independence, but they're also hunting in a certain way. They're communicating. We just can't hear it or we can't see it. And it's very alien to ours where they're mostly focusing on electricity. So I'm going to end this video here. Thank you for watching. If you like my videos, please comment, like and subscribe. And if you have any video ideas, then please let me know. And thank you.